you want. Um, if you have a question, just raise your hand and we will call on you. I think Gamzee has the first question. I like cerulean mango, if that's a good thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you guys, I, I would assume we're all here today in this power room just to, just to learn about voice acting. If any, how, how, to, how to get started, what are the, what's the equipment that we need to buy to get started voice acting, any, any sort of burning question about how to get started? Not this specifically sort of in the Pony Family. In the Pony Family? Yes? I'm sure most of us have That's a good way to begin a panel. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I have to go first? Okay. It is oh, my first. Oh, ladies first. Um, I'm Raina Chan. I do the voice of Twilight in Double Rain Room and the Pony Dot Blue series. I played Mayor, well, I played Mayor Mayor in Fighting This Magic before I got season to season. Um, I do Colgate and a lot of stuff. Um, I do a bunch of characters and reenact by ponies. And I do a lot of homestuck voices. Yeah. And hello, everybody. My name is Soul Rag, or Yap Lap, as you can tell by the very loud uh, mic. Uh, yeah. uh, what I do is that I am known in the community for screaming the songs from My Little Pony, just with a lot of anger, a lot of passion, to really show like how like much we love the show. Uh, besides doing that, I'm also working on my own little series called Soul Rack Adventures. Woo! Which is, yeah, 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 it's, 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 it's this series yeah. where we have different OCs like Rina Chan, she's gonna have a, for OC, she's working at a coffee shop, and just Soul Rack is just you know, being himself around the coffee shop. Uh, some of the projects that I've done, I did Ryan Will for uh, Ms. Rina Chan's uh, Toothpaste Cannon. Toothpaste Cannon, that's, that's, that's cool. Uh, and yeah, just some other projects. I think I've done more projects uh, as just a voice actor than pony projects, but I definitely enjoy doing pony projects. So, we're going to start with three questions over here. Yes, sir, what can we do for you? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, you remember the video called, you know, Sorry, Adventures when you mean Final Scratch? Mm -hmm. Somebody did, uh, like, a YouTube proof of it, you know? They did. Really? That's awesome. I want to see it. Like I did. What is your reaction to that? Uh, I, I don't recall, because a lot of people make really like cool like, tributes to the Soul Rag character. Uh, but I, I'll see it. I'll, you know, uh, what's it? I'll, I guess I'll just search Soul Rag on YouTube. I don't recall that. Maybe it just happened. Sometimes things just happen. But yeah, Vinyl was Rita in that Soul Rag Ventures video. Yes, I haven't seen it. She was uh, really cool. Today I'm going to teach you how to drop the bass. I said something like this. I was like, hey, uh, do sir, honestly, how do I love sir? Yeah. How do you mind for fish? Oh, yeah. Uh, just smack him. Drop, to drop the base, grab a, a steel bat and smash an aquarium. And then the fish constantly. And then you can record it and put it in the base. That's how you drop the base! <laughs> Any other question? Um, because you were personally involved with Double Rainbow, what was your reaction to it, and what do you think they could have improved? Um, I thought it was pretty good overall. It was a, a nice chance to work with a great team of people. I think if I had to choose something that I felt could have been improved about it as a viewer, it would have been um, just like some of the writing, some of the pacing of dialogue, things like that, didn't quite feel as like natural, I guess, as an episode of a show, so I guess that would have been something that I'd like to see improve, but overall I thought it was really good for a fan project. The music was fantastic. So I'm interested, how did you two start voice acting? Like, what made you say, oh, hey, I want to voice magical talking <laughs> ponies, for whatever reason? Um, I've been doing voices for long before the pony fandom. I've been doing them for almost a decade now. I used to do sites like Newgrounds, things like that. 
I started doing the ponies once I started watching ponies because everyone was like, you sound like the purple one, you should try voicing her. And I was like, okay. So I auditioned for a fan project and I got Twilight and Celestia in that and that was pretty cool. And then I just kept auditioning because people were like, oh, you make a good Twilight. Uh, for me, I was, uh, how I just became a voice actor was from Rita's story about just being in high school, wanting to try something out. A friend came to her and said, hey, hey, uh, I'm doing this little flash project. Do you want to voice on it? And said, yeah. So I said, hey, why not? I'm in high school. I want to voice act for cartoons. Um, so that's how I got started. Just voice acting. Get a microphone and I could record funny voices. Uh, and the Pony fandom. I, um, the way that I started was that uh, I just... I had this weird idea. I was watching a video, and there was a commercial of car insurance. It was this guy who's like tied to the back of a chair, and he's like, "Mommy!" And he's like throwing cereal everywhere. I thought it was really funny. I thought, like, what if this guy was a brony? And he's just like really excited to watch Mother Pony when he gets home, or like maybe in the TV screen that the cars have. And he's just like, "Mother Pony!" And he's like passionately screaming about it. Uh, and when I got that idea, I was just like, I was like, "Oh man, this is really funny." And uh, I guess like after that I just after I saw how like well it was received, people like, oh this is really funny. I don't know what it is, but it's really funny. I just continued making Hush Not Quite Now, So Many Wonder Song. And uh, there was a point where the Soul Ride character didn't even exist. Like this just a shit guy, but nothing. It was just some guy that was probably like weird. Cause I record inside a car for a acoustic reasons. Yeah. <laughs> no really, like you know, you take down your laptop, you take down your microphone, your phone. And you have nobody looking at you because when well, you're voice acting, you're making all these funny faces. But, you know, not in your car or anyone or whatever. Car. Um, but yeah, that's how uh, uh, now we're doing the solo adventures, which is awesome. It's going to be the next big thing. I know. I know. You guys will be like, oh, dude, solo adventures is so cool. It's like, yeah. Okay. You guys are here for yes. How would you go about auditioning for a voice acting? That is a really, really good question. Um, it's kind of hard in the Pony fandom compared to other communities I've been in, in the sense that there aren't a lot of open auditions. So a lot of it is kind of getting your voice out there. Um, sometimes people will submit to Equestria Daily when they have a project open for audition. Um, a lot of times you can find out about it through friends, like if you're in a voice acting group. Um, I'm part of Silly Philly who made the Snowdrop animation, and so sometimes we just tell each other about like, oh hey, they need more ponies for this or that. I mean, it's it's definitely got to be tougher for the guys because there aren't as many male roles to go around. But at least for the females, there's usually quite a few parts open. Um, one of the things you can do as well is you can make a demo of the voices you can do, and you can post it on your YouTube because a lot of people do search for things like that. Like if they're looking for I don't know, an Applejack voice actor, they'll type in like Applejack fan voice or something like that and they'll listen to different auditions and videos that people did trying to do their voice and they'll choose who the most accurate ones are and contact them. So it's definitely a good idea to start, even if you don't have um, a lot of, you don't have a lot of followers or a lot of subscribers to just start posting your stuff because I made a brand new YouTube account when I first got into ponies and it didn't have anything on it and I just started posting my auditions for Fighting Is Magic and then people started contacting me like, oh I heard your audition for Rarity, can you try for her for my project? So definitely do whatever you can to get out there. Go on Tumblr, post voice clips, post global tweets. Do you have anything to add, Solak? Hey, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't do big I think your nope. hand is next to the Twilight Licious. <laughs> Um, from uh, looking through uh, your past uh, content and stuff like that uh, for the Pony Fandom, I'm, I'm well aware that uh, your favorite Pony voice is Miles Crash. What is it about uh, the character that makes it so fun for your voice? And uh, like, what sort of inspires your interpretation of the character? Um, the way that I decided to come up with her was like kind of like a fun-loving Pony, um, kind of tomboyish, but not like over the top, so like, I mean, when we first see her, she's playing at like a fashion show, so thought, okay, you know, she's she's kind of like me, like she's tomboyish and a little girly at the same time, she's energetic, but she's kind of chill when she's just hanging out with her friends or with Octavia or whatever, so that was kind of like my basis for how I approached the character. The, the original voice that I 
wanted to use for her, that was like my head cannon voice was Daring Do, but I can't, I can't sound like that, so I just kind of ended up going with something different. Um, I think I'm like really attached to playing characters that are interesting, which Rhino doesn't even have a kind of personality, so we can't really say that, but um, I like playing um, Trixie, for example, because it's fun to play characters who are, I like playing mean characters. Like, you know, I, I like playing Briska from Homestuck. It's, it's just very fun to be, uh, like, villains, um, I don't know, just characters who really make you think, who aren't one-trick homies, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh my god, Solrak and Silver. What? And I'm like, Instapot. I was like, I was questioning it, I was like, eh, okay, it takes rocket and then it's like, here's Bam, got it. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's, it's a, I just like it all the time. Not that, just, not that I'm in it, it's just it's really good. <laughs> totally, yeah. But, I'll always like Gamzy? I like to do Pesar. I like to do Sure. You guys ready? You guys ready? Here we go. 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 It's the second chapter. Yeah. Yes. You know what to expect if you were at last EQ. Oh, yeah. Uh, you use Audacity or do you recommend a different voice recording? I use Audacity. It's yeah, it's, it's simple, free, it's and easy. Use Audacity. Unless you're mixing, like, um, if I'm, like, producing something, I will use Audition, which is more expensive, but um, cause just because like mixing in Audacity, it can be done, but it's kind of hard and it's a little more limited. But if you're just recording, Audacity is fine. It's free. There's no reason not to download it. Um, any other people that haven't asked a question yet? I think so. Sure. Yeah. You have a tin in hand that makes like water shine. <laughs> <laughs> What's it going to ask? Isolated from everybody. 
and I can just do like, I can like dance and fly, well, I can't fly, but dance. Um, but yeah, and I mean, I guess even to this point, I'm like, oh man, like, I hate my voice. <laughs> No, that, that actually brings up a really good point. Um, a lot of people have to deal with the whole getting over hearing their voice. Like, I don't know if like any time you guys have tried like going on your computer or your phone and recording yourself, and you're like, ew, I sound like that. No, yes. no way. Yeah, I think that's, that's a really common thing because we don't sound like how we hear ourselves in our head. So um, one of the things that you can do that will help that get better over time is to just record yourself constantly. Just, you know, like, get audacity, like I said, just, like, record it on your computer. Be like, okay, I'm going to try voicing this pony or that pony. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be a pony. You can try just voicing whatever. Voice a, a webcomic that you read online or voice something from, like, a manga. And just, like, listen to it. And you have to, like, be able to hear yourself how others will hear you and listen for the flaws. Like, can you understand what you're saying or are you rushing through your words? Because that's a mistake a lot of new voice actors make because they, they talk too fast, they kind of trip over what they're saying. So you don't really realize that until you stop listening. And the, the beginning road is not pretty. Like, you can you can probably ask us, like, what are some of your earliest works? And we're like, no, let's not go there. <laughs> um, I, should find, I should find some of my old recordings just to post it and be like, okay, you guys think that like being a voice actor means you have like a natural talent for not listening to my first recording? <laughs> uh, you have questions. How do you find the voice of your pony? Like, like some voice actors say no, like automatically when they find that voice, it's not the pony actor. How do you find that certain voice that you know that's like your voice that you do? Is that both of us or, or well, just Yeah, well, either either one of you. Uh, well, I guess like one thing about just voice acting overall is to get a good description of the character. Is a character someone who's happy or kind of angry? Is does he have a sour attitude? Is he really in disguise? Kind of kind. Um, and just a picture usually helps. Just and like there was a the Burn documentary. Um, Tara Strong just saw the character. She's like, yeah, I already know what what she sounds like. And when she auditioned, like Lauren Trust was like, yep, yeah, that's my Twilight. Um, it's just to really play out pull around and uh, just really try to not give up on the first try. Just keep going until you know that this is the voice. Because eventually you will. And if you're trying to figure out, like, say which one of the main six you sound the most like, just try them all. Um, I kind of knew from the beginning that I would end up being mostly cast for Twilight out of different ponies because I was typecast for that voice even before Twilight. And this was the voice I used for, um, like, Princess Zelda and stuff like that. So. I've always been asked to do this voice, and then when you know it happened with Twilight, I just kind of changed the way that I that I acted her. I just listened to how because I mean, if you're voice matching an existing character, you kind of have to sound like them. If you're creating a voice for say like a background pony, then you can come up with uh, your own thing. Like I guess like for Colgate, um, I just started reading like a few fan fictions, a few descriptions of how people thought she would be like, oh, she's a dentist, she's cute and tiny, and everyone kept saying, like, she's just like this adorable little pony, and she's always like, brushy, 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 so I thought I'll give her a little cute high voice. Just play around with it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I was wondering if you uh, have faced any circumstances that made you really uh, question whether this is what you wanted to be doing with your future and how you got over that. That's a deep question. That's a good question. Um, a lot for me, actually. Like, there were so many times where, like, do I really want to do this? Because I'm just getting hate over and over and over again. And, um, you know, it got to the point where some people found my personal information posted <coughs> online. And, like, you know, like, there's, there's some pretty crazy stuff that can happen when people don't like you on the internet. But, I think the way that you know if it's what you're meant to do is no matter what happens, you'll still want to do it, you'll still have that passion for it. And I've had pretty much everything thrown in my face say, you can't do this, and I'm like, no, I can! <laughs> mm -hmm. Third man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Someone told me once, you're not successful until you have haters. <laughs> so that's, 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 that's good. Very yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really is just a hobby, I guess, for now, but if, if I can, if I, if this can turn into something that I can live off of, yeah, 100%. Although my voice is telling me not to do it, 
my throat was like, hey, no, be a dentist. <laughs> okay, I'm sold. I'm not voice acting. Just keep going with voice acting. Uh, make sure that you know you have a passion for it. Because even if you have the most expensive software, the most expensive microphone, that doesn't necessarily mean you're a good voice actor. Um, you can have like the cheapest microphone, but if you really show your talent, your potential, and your passion for it, then I think you got it. Um, so yeah, just, just really try to keep going with the voice. Like I, it's, like I said, it's going to be a rough start. You're not going to like your voice. You're not going to like the first projects that you're in. But as you keep going, you're going to see the progress and the quality of the projects just increase. And, and listen to feedback from directors too, because a lot of times they can give you really good advice. Um, like maybe you just aren't hearing something. Like I know when I first started playing Applejack, people were like, well, you don't have enough of the accent. And to me, it sounded like I was doing like really like over the top southern accent, but everyone's like, no, I think you could go a little further. So sometimes what sounds like might be over the top and overacting to you is actually what sounds good to everyone else. Does anybody else have a question? No, that's right. Okay, yeah, I'm sure you've dealt with this before, but how do you deal with um, the fact that you had a project and it's big, well, it's not out yet, but you have the voice actors you need and you maybe write a story or something, and then out of the blue, they all start to just go, I don't want to be part of it anymore. How do you deal with that? Well, if, you, if, if you're a producer and a lot of your voice actors are leaving the project, or a voice actor voices three characters. Yeah, it might be good to kind of look at if there's, if there's a reason. Like, um, some projects are very disorganized, and so a lot of the voice actors end up dropping out because they just cannot handle it anymore. Like, um, I know some of the projects that I and others have dropped were ones where they just recast the actors constantly and they couldn't, you know, they would tell someone, okay, you have this part as this character and then if they couldn't, you know, get on Skype or they found somebody better, they just like replace them. And it's like, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do all these lines for you and then just be told, oh, sorry, I found somebody better like two days after you sent your lines. Like, that's not cool, you know? Um, or we're just like really disorganized, like, um, I don't know, I, I kind of like to stay away from projects where they make you be in like their huge Skype group and send lines that way. It's kind of like, no, um, I don't know, I guess to go back to your question, if a voice actor has to leave for whatever reason, you just have to recast, like, it happens. The project must go on. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Not be yourself is really good because uh, I, 
like maybe sometimes I'm recording, and I'm like doing all these like different like arm movements, and then someone walks by, and, and, uh, and then I just kind of like I, I kind of like lose my character. Like, oh man, I'm weird. But uh, you just have to like get over it and make sure that you're not yourself. You're playing that character. And that person walking is probably not even thinking anything. Um, but yeah, sometimes like they're, they're all kind of like. Are you okay? I'm like, yeah, just screaming about colorful ponies, thank you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, I highly recommend it. It's really nice. Um, and I also do record at night. But I mean, like, the, I have the convenience of being like a Pokemon. Like, it's not like a garage or anything. But I do recommend it. If you have a laptop, a microphone, and a piece of phone, download Audacity and just go to your car. Because it's, it's like a mini studio. That's what I call it. It's like, it's, yeah, this is where all the magic happens, this Toyota. <laughs> um, so yeah, I highly recommend recording in a car if you have that ability. For many reasons. Um, I know you asked a question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, this is for Rina. Um, what is your favorite part of recording? I know you do a lot of singing as well as voice acting. What would you say is more challenging for you, finding and creating your own voice for a character that, had, that hasn't had one before, or trying to sing and fit you know, a musical? I would say singing is definitely harder because I cannot sing. <laughs> um, I try, it's fun, I like doing it, but I don't think it's something that I'm really like, talented or good at. But on the other hand, you know, it varies based on the person because I know singers who say, well, I can sing, but I don't know how to sing in character. And for me, the in character part comes pretty easily. It's just like matching pitches and things like that that I have a hard time. Hold on, back! <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, my cute. Well, I have a cutie mark for my OC. It's actually a cup of espresso because I'm a coffee addict. And I also um, I make coffee. He's tried some of my homemade coffee before. My cute mark is a. <laughs> it's a six because I am a six addict. And uh, I. I and uh, I make six. <laughs> I just tried to I tried to restate the like Rita's answer over the six. I, I failed because I forgot what she said. <laughs> but you, you'll find out why it's the six later. It's, it's kind of cool. It's supposed to represent like never losing your like, childhood. Six. Yeah. By the way, I'm not trying to be rude by texting during the panel. One of the other staff members needs to talk to me about one of the room changes, so I'm trying to figure that out. Maybe. It's like, oh, I'm boring. <laughs> um, what is the worst you've done? Like the worst voice? <laughs> yes. Oh, goodness. That's PG panel. I really can't do Mina from Homestuck. I just cannot do that voice. Um, if we're talking about, like, ponies, I can't really do, like, Sakura because um, the accent is really, really hard. And um, I tried doing Chrysalis for the fun of it, but her voice is, like, deep and out of my range. Of uh, the main six, I think I have the most trouble with Rainbow Dash because she has like this rasp in her voice. It's really hard to get, and um, her voice can—I I don't know. Like Rainbow Dash and Speedy Bell both have that thing they do with their voice. It's like impossible to do. I think one thing that I was that you probably can't find, and I—I—I I, I, I can, I can make it a challenge. Try to find it, but I play a very perverted camel in, in Flash Two, <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I can say. Next year, if you found it, like, I'll give you something. Soul Rack, I mean, like, searching Soul Rack, Camel, Flash Cartoon, won't get you. You'll have to look. Okay. Hey, what did you Yes. No, I went in um, a lot of the stuff like that's why I moved here to Southern California because a lot of voice work is done here. Um, if you, you know, like if you're from Alaska or wherever, like I originally am, then you can't really do like official voice work. So definitely don't, and they come down here. And part of what they do to prepare for that is by doing like the online voice acting because they learn how to do different voices. They learn how to act and learn to act is the most important thing. And even if you don't live here in California, you can take theater classes at your school. You can um, you can even take like online acting classes. It doesn't have to be voice. It's just like learning to act is so important. And it's the foundation of everything you do. Uh, can you do some Nemeza lines, please? Oh, sure. Um, do you have anything specific you want me to say, or do you want me to just uh, talk about shipping walls? Shipping walls, and you have to say perfect at least once. Gam, gam, I put you on my shipping wall with Car Cat. It's perfect. And Gam, gam, left. Oh no, honk, honk. I need my meow now. Aww, I don't know what that is, but it's cute. <laughs> Like, well, you, um, and lots of things happen. 
Uh, if some pony doesn't brush, show them who gets crushed! <laughs> you gotta like, mm, you know, go like this. <coughs> it works. Don't strain your voice too much. If you're doing something and it's hurting too much, take a break. AKA me when I first started trying to do Rainbow Dash because she was my first favorite of the main six. And finally I gave up trying to voice Rainbow Dash. I don't know like Rainbow Dash. She's too persistent. Moving on, next question. Because we like that one.
a sonic and toilet. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, yeah. uh, yeah. I'm for that. I don't know. Soul Racket and Sonic. Spencer, come here. Spencer, 